Hey, what's up? This is Václav. People often ask me what I use for measuring the energy consumption. I show nice charts and dashboards and they go, well, that's nice, but where did they get the data from? Uh, they have plenty of smart devices, but none of them can measure uh, power consumption. And I say, well, I use different devices, but usually the energy metering devices, they require a separate current measurement transformers. So it's a little bit complicated. Why? Well, let me explain. Here is a very simple example. An appliance, bulb in this case, is connected between the phase and the neutral. The consumed power is calculated as a multiplication of the voltage and the current. To measure the voltage is rather easy, just measure the potential difference between the phase and the neutral. But the current is slightly more complicated. The current is passing through the wire, so to measure it we need to disconnect the circuit and put some measuring device in the middle. Or there is actually a better way. The AC current passing through the wire generates a magnetic field. And if we put a current transformer around the wire, it will induce a matching current in the secondary circuit without affecting the primary. And this is the current transformer mentioned earlier. So the power consumption sensors usually have two sets of contacts. One to connect the phase and the neutral, that is used to measure the voltage, and it's also used to power the device. And the second for the current transformer. So this is kind of bulky, with a lot of wires and it's a bit more expensive. And sometimes you might actually need to buy the current transformers extra. For example, we can look at the Shelley 3EM I used previously. But sometimes you can get smart switches and outlets that do the energy consumption metering internally. So if you need a smart switch, this could be one of the options. But it's often either not available, it could be a little bit more expensive, but sometimes it's not what you want. I think they don't actually use the current transformers to measure the current, but they uh, measure that through a small register they insert in the circuit. So for high currents, this might be an issue. For example, the charger I use for my car specifically says that it should not be connected to a smart plug. And the Shelly 3 Pro that I like doesn't feature energy monitoring, probably for that reason. Initially, I thought this is weird. I expected that, but I ended up just using a separate energy monitor for that. Now, recently I came across this very interesting one from Zemi Smart. What I like about it is they managed to integrate the whole sensor inside the current transformer. So you just need to connect that to the voltage and it's done. They have offered to send me the product to check it out. They have two versions available. I got the Zigbee version, but they also have Wi-Fi version. The specs are max current is 63 amperes and the basic current is 10 amperes. Not sure what's the difference. And it consumes uh, half watt. So let's check it out. The device is designed to be installed inside the switchboard, but I'll try to put it inside an outlet. Hopefully there'll be enough space behind the socket. The installation should be done by a professional. And when they do that, they will disconnect the circuit breakers and test it to make sure it's really disconnected before commencing the work. So I've done it, it's safe and I can work on it. Then all we need to do is to pull the phase wire through the hole. And while it's doing that, we need to make sure that the energy flows in the direction of the arrow. So the arrow goes towards the outlet. And then connect the two wires to the phase and neutral. Then we can switch on the power and add it to home assistant. I go to Zigbee integration devices and add a device. Back to the device, press and hold the pairing button until it starts blinking fast and it has been discovered and added to home assistant. Now I will add the area and uh, rename the device. Great. So let's check it out. I go to the devices and uh, it is there. It's on the very end. I'll click on it and it looks like it's missing the power and energy. So that didn't work. Hmm. Okay, let's try something else.
I use the Zigbee Home Assistant native integration that is based on the Zigbee library that basically follows the Zigbee standard. But some of the cheaper devices interpret the Zigbee protocol slightly differently and the ZHA won't understand it in this case. But I have another Home Assistant where I use Zigbee to MQTT. This is an add-on that has a slightly different approach. They try to support different devices, including their exceptions. So let's try that one. It is an add-on, so I'll go to Add-ons, Open Web UI, then Allow All Connections, and Set the Device to Pairing again. Again, the device was discovered, so let me rename it and check the box to update the entity ID in the Home Assistant. Now, let's check the device. And this time it looks much better. It says it's supported and after checking the published values, I see all the values. I even see the picture of the product, so it definitely knows it. I have this running on another box, but the way I've configured that, it uses a common MQTT server. So if everything worked fine, if I go back to my production box, I should find it in there. So I go back to my production home assistant, I go to MQTT, and here it is, including all the values. Let me turn some device on, turn on the power, and it really works. So that worked great at the end. So it looks like Zigbee to MQTT is a better choice for this. Uh, I moved from Zigbee to MQTT to ZHA some time ago. Uh, unlike the uh, Zigbee to MQTT that uses MQTT to communicate with Home Assistant, the uh, ZHA is natively integrated. So it should be more reliable, faster, simpler. But I guess the compatibility with some devices continues to be an issue. So I guess I'll start thinking about moving back to the Zigbee to MQTT. Well, we'll see. Okay, so now I can measure power consumption in my outlet. But why should you care, you might ask? Why should I waste my money to just show some nice chart? Okay, let me tell you a real story in my case. I'm not gonna look at electricity, but uh, gas consumption in my case. Our gas bill increased quite significantly. So recently I tried to figure out if I could further improve my heating efficiency by replacing my aging uh, gas heater with a heat pump. But as part of that, I reviewed my gas bill with the contractor and I knew my consumption went down, although due to the increased prices, I still ended up paying significantly more than before. And I was hoping that the automations had some positive effect. But I also knew that the weather last winter was quite mild and uh, I decreased the temperature overall. So uh, I was really looking forward for some benchmark. I was uh, not sure quite how much of that was really my doing and how much was that was kind of normal. Uh, but what I didn't expect was he raised his eyebrows and he said that he hasn't seen such a saving before. Typically they see a reduction of 10, 15%. By reducing the heating temperature by one degree, you save about 10%. And the effect of the weather was not that significant. But thanks to the automation, I managed to reduce it much more. On my energy bill, the utility company shows the evolution of my consumption over the last couple of years. And it shows that my gas consumption went down by 25% in the last two years. Which correlates with the time I was implementing my smart heating control. Uh, the company I work for is also doing smart energy management and even there we typically shoot for savings around 10% figure. I mean it could be that my initial consumption was ridiculously high and it was and this means that there's probably still space for further optimization and that would have a much bigger effect than changing the type of heating which it turns out to be very expensive and the return of investment would be somewhere around 30 years maybe, which is longer than the lifetime of the setup. So I'm now focusing back on measurement and consumption optimization rather than upgrading my uh, infrastructure. Okay, so that was heating. And there I'm doing energy audit and I have a few plans, but uh, I do similar things for electricity. 
and I also have some more plans based on understanding of the consumption. But more on that later. Until then, bye!